Glenn, pleasure to have you on, mate. Thanks for joining us. How have you been? I mean, some of the art you've been cranking out the last few months has been incredible. I just want to put up an image here for everyone that, for everyone watching. I don't think you can see it, Glenn, but you were in front of the Frankenstein piece. Yes, Man, yes. And you are a talented son of a bitch. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it's really what uh, what has gotten me here is just, you know, drawing and uh, and ideas, you know. Where do the ideas uh, come from? Where do they spring from? Are you like me? You just out of nowhere, write it down, on to the next one? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, my whole life has been um, – you know, ideas. I, I I wanted to be a cartoonist ever since I I could pick up a pencil, and you know, a cartoonist inherently have to just they're they're all about ideas all the time, right? And so you just get thinking about ideas, and I I don't know. I I also think that it, it's a talent. Um, it's something that, and whether it's a talent or not, it's a skill. And uh, some people are born with it. Other people are born with the like. With the with the game game um, people, man, you need all these. You need a million ideas, right? And as it, what you need is those those ideas that people are like diving in on what they do, right? And so that's what I look forward to is like, oh, I'll give you a big box and everything, and then the team jumps in and we all add to that, you know. So when you're directing a Callisto or a Call of Duty, and you've got you know hundreds of employees or sort of, you know, you're working with hundreds of people and everyone's got an idea, how do you kind of approach that? And how do you pick which ideas are the best? And you see what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> not, not everybody has ideas. Right. Uh, and, and, uh, and as much as you try to solicit new ideas on a daily basis, you're not going to get them. You're really? Dead. Oh, yeah, you get the same. You get the same people like writing, and you you want those those people. But um, no, no, it's not like uh, you know. Some people are like, "Hey, look, I, I just want to be come up with ideas on the environment I'm working on. I just want to come up with ideas in my you know in in this area." Other people just say, "Just tell me what to do, and I'll I'll do it." Um, other people, you don't want their ideas. Uh, <laughs> No, they said there's no such thing as a bad idea until it's you know, down to the to the wire and you just want good ideas. But um, the truth is, is that even a half an idea might spur something in your head. So I always want to hear whatever they have to say. But no, not everybody has ideas. How uh, this is a simple question: How hard is it to make a game? Very hard. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 you know, when I first started, it didn't seem so hard. But uh, even then, it was. Uh, there's always this weird new technology you're always learning um i think it's part of that challenge that the, the, the fact that it is hard that that's what i like about it it's like you know there's some parts of it like the technology part of it like they tell me all about it and i understand what it does but man you know i'm not about to get in there and work with the engineers except for you know when we start messing with tables and all but um, so I rely on on uh, I rely on the team. You know. How much has it changed since you worked on you know uh, James Bond all those years ago, or Barbie, or you know, it's it's changed significantly since then, hasn't it? Well, let's see. Bond, maybe uh, you know we we would have to. Yeah, I remember back then we were counting polys, right? I would be like, oh, you only have like four hundred polys for for Bond's head. <laughs> nowadays now it's like you know <laughs> many um so yeah i mean constantly it's always constantly changing but each time uh, i can remember we're always asking for more as developers like you know more speed more uh, more memory more of this more of that so um and we're never satisfied i noticed with a lot of your games you're pushing the the limits with mocap facial capture is that something you've always been quite interested in because you 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 know, Callisto is one of the leaders in that for sure, and same with World War II. Uh, thanks. The, uh, well, for me, um, as I'm uh, playing games and making games, it, um, what I was noticing as we got, you know, higher higher fidelity and, and all, 
is that the only time like the worlds I was believing in, whether they were completely real or not, didn't matter because if the character fit in there, I was immersed. But the things that I noticed that was taking me out of immersion recently has been animation. You know, mm -hmm. a stutter here or a quick, you know, something off. It, the worlds were looking great. There's no, you know, it, there's, there's uh, no shortage of, uh, you know, great looking art. But the the stuttering was bothering me, so um, and taking me out. So I wanted to try and you know uh, try and get as far away from uh, from that as possible, so that that we can be immersed. I mean, all you need is a glitch in a horror game, and you're not scared unless it's glitched to scary. But you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Um, yeah. What do what do devs think? I'm, I'm curious. I guess you might be only speaking for yourself, but what what do devs think of of Metacritic in general? I, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, look, I mean, it's it's ridiculous that a a fifty one fifty score will keep you down, and then you could get you know five one hundreds after that. They're not gonna. They're they're not gonna make up for the for the fifty in in uh, a lot of ways. You're sunk, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that they need to start looking at like, there's the guy in the bathtub who does his thing inevitably with a cigar in a bathtub and says, you know, screw you, game industry. I'm gonna give you a fifty because I didn't like your game. Well. You know, a public company just spent $150 million on that. And um, 400 devs just spent four years of their life on that. And your 50 or your 40 just brought their score from an 81 down to a 72 or something like that. And 100 people just got laid off. They have no idea the implications that some of these things have. Um, I have sat around, you know, companies where they said, you know, Glenn, your 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 yours and your team's bonus is going to be based on Metacritic score. You're kidding, really? Eight, uh, above eighty. Yeah. I mean, there, there were times, and we just said we're not doing it. Um, yeah, I mean, um, it is it is, you know, Metacritic. Look. You've heard me say this uh, out, out in public before is, you know, it, it's the Wild West out there. You have giant, giant gaming publications that aren't part of it. And then you'll have some, somebody yeah, I know. who has nothing to do I with know. it. Exactly. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's broken. And, but too much of the game industry is, is one off. And people need Metacritic. Right, they get it right a lot, but they don't a lot. But it, it's not the same for movies and TV. It feels like people don't care as much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, when you're paying seventy nine bucks, um, no. Nah, yeah, I guess so. You know, I, I I go to a theater and I'm going to pay. Yeah, but it's kind of a night. You kind of expect that with the video game. You've only got like two or three a year or whatever it is. You know, you want to make sure you get the right one. So I absolutely get it. Uh, uh, are the budgets blowing up now for gaming? Is it is it becoming too expensive for the returns? Do you think, or is there? A uh, well, yeah. The problem is, is that the niche games can't afford it. Like, yeah, you know, I just had that issue with uh, Callisto now. That's a whole other problem. I mean, you still have to, uh, a, a game like Callisto, um, we, we walked into it all saying that, hey, the second game is where we make our money, that on, on a franchise like this, that, you know, you try and get out there and try and, um, but. Build the foundation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, but those days of, you know, making making yourself a game and, uh, and, and, you know, quick turnover, you know, making, making, uh, making some money are, whew, they're, they're tough out there, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, so we got to get this, we got to get the the price down um, of, of making a game because the truth is over the last 20 years, what have they gone up 10 bucks or something, maybe 15 bucks for uh, a game. They really haven't gone up the amount that, uh, the games have gone up. So 
when let's just use Dead Space. That was about 15 years ago. When Dead Space came out, Callisto was about four times what Dead Space cost. But yet wow. the the cost of the game is I think 10 bucks more. Yeah. Four times, man. Four times. That's and crazy. We're talking about hundreds of people, you know. So how much pressure was on you on that project? Because you also I don't think people understand that you're working through COVID. Like COVID hit you guys pretty hard as well, didn't it? Oh man. We uh well, first of all, we started off with a, a new studio, um, a new new company, you know, a new engine, yeah. a, a new IP, a new, a new everything. Everything, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we're six months into it, and they, they call up, and they're like, oh, by the way, there's new consoles. <laughs> uh. <laughs> they, they actually thought, okay, we'll just switch to PS5, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I said, well, that's a magnitude harder and the, you know like what what do you mean it's it's you know four to five <laughs> and I'm like yeah it's uh we're talking millions of dollars more <laughs> and uh like really, you can't I, just flick like yeah, yeah yeah well first of all they don't come with with uh you know instructions instruction manual <laughs> and if it did the playstation would be in japanese so we'd have to yeah yeah so, um yeah i mean people don't realize that all of a sudden you get a another super computer handed to you and nobody knows what it's doing uh <laughs> yeah it's it's tough so. but it's not it wasn't as bad as the ps3 days because i heard ps3 was a nightmare to, to dev on is that right from uh, your memory you no know, i gotta i gotta admit that the they all seem to uh everybody complains in the beginning but then they just bust right through them you yeah know, we got some really smart people and i'm probably the same way or like i got a bitch in more than seem like but uh there there was some you know this this one is so big it just felt like all the developers were were um not being able to to test their games as well as they wanted and they had to get out on time because we just yeah well yeah. first of all you know COVID, but yeah uh, it was just much more of a bear to, to test and all. With Callisto, I'm guessing you had to get it out of that date. I'm guessing you wanted it a bit more time. Yes, I did. <laughs> I, I wanted I wanted about three and a half more months. Yeah, and I was led to believe uh, um, for about three months, four months that that's the way it was going to be. And uh, so I actually was in, in October or, or September of 21. I was told that, you know, just you're going to get the time. Just no regrets. That was the term that was kept being used. No regrets. Just put whatever you want into the game, you know. And so, <laughs> you know, I, I spent uh, over that, that Christmas vacation. Uh, well, the, when you're developing, I don't know how much they are anyway. But just design it, come up with other ideas with some of the guys and uh uh, about you know january comes around and uh some of the the, the folks come over and uh they just said no 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 it's december of 2022 20, and i was like eh, it's not going to get done and it's going to cost you more money it's not like it costs you less money because you need, you're getting it out three months sooner no because if i just kept it on the way it was going i wouldn't have to add anybody but if you want it done, I've got to accelerate everything by three and a half months, which means I need to jam people on here. If I need 20 people, I actually get 30 or 40 because the learning curve will not adjust. Yeah. To, you know, so yeah. it's like, you know, it, it and so I said. I'm guessing it's a stressful job. It sounds very stressful. <laughs> yeah 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 well it, it it but it's uh you know it's so creative it's uh it, it, you know that's that's what i enjoy about it. well you've been doing it for so many years i mean you i know you're passionate about it i can tell still yeah i enjoy it i'm 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 uh i don't know how much more of it i can take uh because yes uh uh your your my health you know kind of mm. goes downhill after after three four years of, of it you know it's just I won't go to the gym this time. I don't need to eat good today. Yeah. You know, and it just goes on and on, you know. 
Have you found yourself being more healthy since ending that project? I, I've lost over 60 pounds. Wow. Yeah, in about 16 awesome. months. Yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's really changed my life. I just, uh, you know, I, I, I left um, uh, striking distance uh, so that I could do that and take care of a few things, but uh, I was not feeling good. Well, you know, I know that you worked on your daughter on that game, right? She came on. That's pretty yes. special, right? Yes, it's really special. Yeah. She started actually at Sledgehammer as a as a uh, QA. Uh, yeah, yeah, QA. Yeah. 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 Um, no, she's turned out to be a fantastic uh, environment artist. And then uh, on top of that, she knows she plays every freaking game. So um, she's just in tune with everything. She Is that with. your fault? You you obviously got her into it, I'm guessing. Well, yeah. I remember <laughs> saying, hey, you know, you can't play, uh, you know, Dead Space because you're only like eight. But, like, <laughs> you know, when mom wasn't looking, you know. Uh, yeah, my, then, my brother played Mortal Kombat. He was about eight. I, yeah. I snuck it to him with the fatalities and he's fine. He's a great guy. Yeah, exactly, no right? Yeah. yeah. You just got to, uh, depends on the person, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we grew up with some pretty violent cartoons too, right? They're always like blowing each other up with the dynamite and everything. So they lived. <laughs> so take me back to Dead Space. I mean, I don't think I don't know how many people know this on my channel, but the original vision you you created Dead Space. Yes. It comes from your brain. This is one of the pivotal games of all time. Do you Thank ever you. think, fuck me, I did a pretty good job there? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's so weird. I mean, I feel like for the last few years, I've been just like fighting, telling people, you know, people who said, Hey, here comes the co-creator. And I'm like, well, well who's the other co? All right. Because no, Why do they say that? I don't get that. It, it got, it got picked up uh, somewhere along the line. And then right. you know, I went back and I did look at, uh, I've looked at some of my, uh, my Wikipedias from my, my, my games and, and they are, uh, truthfully challenged in many ways. Um, I mean, people get a hold of those things and, you know, uh, uh an idea has no, what is it has no parents or something like that. So it, it just gets blown to the wind. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I just said, well, all you got to do is look in the credits, a, and then B just, ask but yeah that's uh, <laughs> that space uh uh i, I was a uh, was a deal I, I made with paul lee who was the uh, interim uh well interim for like two and a half three years uh a ceo at at ea um, yeah and, i love uh, that story how you pitched him yeah he was he was just uh really open to it and just a really really a uh, really good guy and i think he was into maybe he's trying to get some new uh a new IP in the EA. And so you were never going to come on for Dead Space 2? It was always just going to be the first one? Or was there ever talks with you doing the no, second? No, no, um, I mean, look, you know, I, I'm making Dead Space. And after, so I, you know, just focused on it, right? So, yeah. But by the, when you're done, I, I wasn't thinking about a sequel. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, it was really uh, that this game was just like, OK, get you know, it was just focused on the game, which is really strange. And then uh, all of a sudden we're, we're, we're talking about sequels, um, but it took a little while after that, too, because even EA wasn't sure what they had. I remember the head, the absolute head of publishing, the guy in charge, right? Big, big man. He comes to me, the game ships in October, I guess, right? Comes to me in December, and I bump it. No, I bump into him in the, in, 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 at the lunchroom at EA, right? And he says, I played Dead Space over the weekend. I'm like, okay, three months late. Um, had a publishing, where is it, you know? And he says, I want you to do a demo. I want you to, and I'm like, a demo now? He said, yeah, get it done with them. So there we were working for Christmas again, getting the demo done because nobody really kind of thought about that Dead Space would be anything. I don't think, you know, I remember we did uh, have, uh, we had some inkling because 
we were, we're working a cup. I think we were about four months in, five months in, and uh, already we had a scare. Um, because EA challenges you. They, at the time, they challenged me. They said, we don't think you can do scary. So we're gonna, you're going to have to go out and get yourself a movie director. Well, it took six freaking months to get a movie directed. That by that, then we had, we had, but we brought Makami in, um, yeah, and right. and so he he and I are sitting there. He's just in our war room, it's just me and him. He, I, I hand it to him. He plays it, and he gets up a few minutes later, and he he he, he started bowing to me, and I'm like, no, 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 dude, no, 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 no. That's not the way this works. Um, Man, and, how did uh, that feel? He, That's pretty gratifying. Oh. Yeah, he said he said this is very good so far, something like that, and uh, um, it was it was really nice. And then, you know, then I knew we had some, so we started bringing execs in. <laughs> um, that must and, have been quietly was, fun to scare well, all the execs. <laughs> it was, but it was also they were like, okay, we get yeah. it, now, you know. And that was was that that vertical slice for the first six months? Is that what you're talking about? That you were showing. The execs, or is this along the journey? Yeah, it changed actually. Like we we did one, and I was happy with it, but I I was like, no, nah, we can do better than that. And so we we kind of tore parts of it apart, and then uh, uh, redid it. And it, uh, a good portion of that ended up in the game, pretty much. Uh, oh wow! It ended up in the game. Yeah. Opening or later down the line? Uh, I think it's a third level. Oh, yeah. Second or third. Yeah. I I, I played it. Recently, it still holds up. Um, Does it really? Yeah, it's hard to to go back and, and play, but uh, oh, does it ever? It's still, I, I think you could release it this year, and it would do just as well. Um, I know the remake came out. Is that? I mean, I know you've been asked this, but that's just is that weird? It, it's a strange feeling going up against something you created with something else you created. I mean, it's just what a world like we live was- in. Yeah, I felt like that was probably the first one in history to, you know, <laughs> to go up against uh, in the same genre, your own game. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. you know, I did. I did look at it, and I, I thought that they did a really good job <laughs> on what I saw. They had respect there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I thought so too. I thought they did a tremendous job, but I think I still prefer the original. Just quietly. Um, <laughs> That's what I felt about. Uh, you know, the thing, well, actually, no, John Carpenter was the original to me. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So the I, I remember hearing about a prison idea for Dead Space. Is that that same prison idea that you used for Callisto? Pretty much, uh, you know, something like it. Um, with, uh, I, you know, it, 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 it changed a little bit, uh, of course, but um, no, that was... Kind of coming back to that idea, and uh, but I think it was more about a, a, what, trying to find something that was so scary to me, and like prison is pretty scary to me. And then put prison on a colony, you know, it just seems like the scariest place. I can't ever leave, and what happens if I'm trapped in it? So it just seemed like a really desperate place to be, and that's why in the beginning we also show the uh, uh, the crash landing. So that you know it's okay. Now it's really hard, you know, to be here. And I'm guessing influences for Dead Space, RE4, Silent Hill, two big ones. Uh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I was playing RE4, you know, during the the first couple of months. I was finishing it up. I, I think for the second or third time. And then, uh, yeah, it's Silent Hill two. Um, I mean, they're they're. This is that is the scariest most terrifying game uh, that I had ever played at the time. They're just, and they had two great audio things. Oh, One is awesome. Right? The, the, what is it? The, the Geiger counter and then uh, pyramid head. Just. What an enemy design that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done anything since, you know, the, the audio that's like so, so terrifying. Yeah, I find that that it's the same for Dead Space. The audio just enhances the experience, and same with Callisto too, and a lot of the games you've worked on, even World War Two. Like the the audio really. A lot of time in those uh, in those boots, man. Did you? Oh, all the time. I'm in there. I mean, I 
I, I don't know all the lingo, but I'm getting there. But yeah, there. I mean, there are near the end of the game too. Is less like weeks and weeks, uh, you know, in there. And um, I know at one point with Callisto, I think that there was uh, I don't know how many days in a row, but uh, they they were long, and it wasn't. I was even saying to the guy, I'm like, "Hey, let's take some time off. <laughs> I want to get this done? And we're taking time off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because those 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 booths can get pretty uh, pretty stinky with just a couple of people in there. So, yeah. are you were are you working with any of the actors on these games? Yeah, sure, all the time. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know Josh pretty well, Josh Dumont. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And- he was, you know, he'd been in uh, both games for, in, in the last two games. And that was that was a conscious. Obviously, it was, it was it was a conscious decision in the beginning not to bring him on because people are saying you don't do that in video games. You don't bring an actor on for two two different games. And I'm like, man, nah, we're gonna try it because he just I, I just liked working with him. You know, he also he has that main character feel to him. I feel like you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, and he has a lot more range than people just think. And um, if mm. you see stuff he's done and. and World War II, he really dialed it up too, right? And mm. put the two together, and there's a big range there. Great guy, and he gets the he gets everybody else that's working with him. It just they, they they feel like a team. Yeah. Uh, especially on World War II, I mean, they acted like a platoon, and he acted like the leader, and that's the way they uh, they they kept it. It was really cool. What do you mean by that? They acted like a platoon, as in they were. Like it's well, a bonding they, they team. Would eat together. They would. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah. They on the set. They would do things together. Um, not that he acted like the boss, but they acted like a platoon. And in wow. a way, they were just did things together, and that that kind of helped them out. It felt uh, getting. And so by the end, you could see them. They they just knew each other pretty well, man. Really well. Yeah. Uh, they got along really well. Uh, a bunch of good guys. So for all three COD games you worked on, you were primarily campaign, weren't you? Campaign and um, a, if there was a, like a zombies mode, uh, it, yeah. I signed that and wrote that. Um, but the thing with uh, with with campaign mode is that it's everything, all the art is used then and the story is then used for multiplayer. For multiplayer, yeah. And so... I, you know, I was spending a lot of time on art directing it and, and uh, putting things together until eventually we got, uh, you know, art director that that we could go up there. And that's as we expanded and, and the games got a little bit bigger. Yeah, I mean, you know, think like World War II, that was three years, three years of research, man. I just spent from the time I knew we were doing World War II, because, you know, when they say, hey, you're doing World War II and everybody high fives and all, um, then I look around, I'm like, hey, what part of World War II are you doing? And they're like, that's your job. So you got to go, you got to go study, right? You got to go research, figure out what part you're going to do. And, and that then, must have been rewarding, talking to your granddad, uh, talking to your dad and and learning about your granddad and, and some of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought my, my uncle too was in World War II. He was in Vietnam, but he was <clears> able to talk to me about my grandfather. Yeah. I always thought that was quite a personal game to you. It, you know, there was a, it, there was quite a bit of personal parts in it because of my uncle. It was the only time uh, my uncle never talked about Vietnam. He did three tours, so um, he, in talking about World War Two, and that at, at first we thought it was going to be maybe the the Korean War or something. Um, he came out of the shell and started telling his stories about uh, Vietnam. And so it felt more, more personal. And then my, uh, I got my records. Um, I got the records from my, uh, my grandfather and they were all burned. They were, they were, they were Xerox copies of his burned records that um, one of the records places for veterans burned. And so it, his half of this book is like burned pages. And I got the Xerox copies of those because they went through and Xerox copied even the burned pages. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I guess they're looking for jobs for people to do, but God bless them for getting, you know, keeping the yeah. record together like that. And that, that, that was a really emotional ending to that game. I remember, I remember 
<laughs> oh, dude, I found that in the. Uh, we, that's what just you research and research, right? We don't we don't have an ending because at the end of a campaign, they it just kind of go home. Right, they right. Didn't start, like they're celebrating, or so we were, you know. They were, of course, you're celebrating, but it it wasn't that that point. So, I remember reading something really obscure, and it's it's talking about a, a concentration camp for Americans. I'm like, what? You know, and and then it says, you know, it hasn't really been nothing's ever been written about this because the uh, it is believed that the American government at the time and the governments worldwide. Just wanted the war over, mm -hmm. right? They they were like, we we don't care if, if Hitler's alive. We don't care if there was this. It's over. It's over. Let's just get it over with. And so it, it, a lot of stuff. This is this was the theory that was given was swept under the rug. But um, man, this was I guess it was about three hundred and fifty Americans or something in it. Uh, in, in this particular concentration camp, and they they treated the, uh, the the Jewish fellows pretty pretty rough. So when you read that, you immediately thought, "Yeah, this is this is what, what we're a great do. ending." Yeah, yeah, but yeah. not only a great ending, but it, it, it's this is knowledge. Now, yeah. not too many people ever uh, ask me about that, but yeah. So go back to Modern Warfare Three. So you actively seeked out that job, didn't you? If I've got my yes. well, yeah. the uh, yeah the. Uh, after Dead Space. Um, Have I got I, the timeline uh, right or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, it, the, you know, EA, uh, I, I had been there about 10 years at that at that time. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And they had promoted me to run, it was Redwood Shore Studio. And then uh, I changed the name to Visceral Games and I stayed on for a while. I helped write Dead Space 2. You oh, know, you did? Director. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Direct a lot of uh, of the, uh, the the bosses there and stuff like that. Wow! Uh, and then, um, but I wanted to run my not a studio I inherited. I was very appreciative of of, of the studio. There's no doubt about it. But um, I wanted to run uh, if I was going to work on another game. And I missed making the game. I was in Dead Space, but I wasn't the you know Dead Space too. So. I didn't spend too much time uh, just running the studio, so I, uh, it was, I wanted Call of Duty. Yeah, they offered me Marvel and they offered me uh, quite a few things at the time, and I'm like, no, Call of Duty. EA. No, this was Activision. Activision. Oh, okay. But you yeah, want yeah, a yeah. cod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want a cod. Yeah. And so, why do you get paired with Michael um, Condry? Is that so? That yeah, no, that. So this was a deal actually that the the whole sledgehammer games was a deal that I actually put together, worked with a guy named Dan Winters. Man, Dan's a great guy, just a great guy. He he, he died a few years ago. Um, Sorry to he hear. He worked down there. He was a good, very good friend of mine. And he worked down there and I said, Dan, man, we should, I want to make Call of Duty. How are we going to do this? I want to make a big team. And, and we spent 13 months, 13 months back and forth. One day he'd lift me up. Another day I lift him up, right? And, um, and then uh, one day, 13 months, didn't know it was going to go on. I get a call and they're like, they, and he's like, Glenn, it's going, it's going now. Um, it was like a Tuesday and he said, they want you to start Monday. I'm like, what? And um, and he said, uh, yeah, they want it done right away, which must mean that Bobby wants it done or something like that. So um, we got done, but they stayed, that, that Friday they called me and they said, by the way, you need to bring a business guy over. And I said, yeah, I know. I, obviously, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. And they're like, no, no, with you. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, oh, shoot, okay. And I had one of two people. I, I, you know, there was two people I was going to go for. And I, I, I asked Michael to come over to my house on, uh, on Sunday, on that Sunday. And I said, I'm starting Monday. I'm starting tomorrow, man. So um, he just said, we spent all day and me – it was it was a hard decision. Um, then he said, "You make me uh, a co-founder, and I'll uh, I'll start with you." And you would go on to work with him for a number of years, number of projects. Yes. Yeah, um, we were brothers. I was going to say you're like brothers, probably bickering, but also a lot of love over the years. Yeah, there was at the time. Yeah, a lot of love. 
Yeah. We went and did a lot of things uh, for the first time. I mean, you know, the, the things you do with Call of Duty, that the, 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 the first Call of Duty game, you're like, whoa, <laughs> this is games? You know, it's pretty amazing. Call of Duty is an amazing ride. It really is. So how how much time did you have to turn around Model Fair 3? Because they don't they don't give a lot of time, Call of Duty. It's a three year cycle, right? At the time. Oh yeah, no, we didn't yeah. have that kind of time. No, no, no. Uh, no they came in one day, and uh, the executives came up, and uh, uh, they said, "We want you to make Modern Warfare 3. And uh, I remember uh, there wasn't consensus on the team or something like that. I won't get into it, but yeah, I think in the middle of the night. I'm like, this is crazy. I don't care what anybody says. We're doing this. I I called up the uh, <laughs> middle of the night, left a message, said, "We're taking, we're taking, come on up." So they came up. And we we discussed it. But, yeah, we worked with uh, Infinity Ward in Infinity Ward at the time. Uh, they had lost a lot of people. Um, Why? You know, because didn't wasn't Model Fair Two a huge success? Yeah, I I, I have no idea what the uh, yeah, what 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 all the problems were? I have no idea. Yeah, um, um, I mean, we hit the ground running. I mean, we, look, we all knew the game by heart. The one before, As a matter of fact, they said to me, "I said I'm going to blow up New York," and they're like, "No, no <laughs> the last game ended in Washington." I said, "It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a short walk from Washington to New York." <laughs> I went to college. I lived in New York City. I went to college in New York City. I want to. Oh, that's blow your it up. idea to. Yes, yeah, I'm right. Going to blow it up. Yeah. And matter of fact, I'm going to blow up the Midtown Tunnel because I spent about two years at, with that carbon monoxide going through my my head for uh, so uh, I wanted to blow that up. Um, and, and what about was your was it your idea to kill off soap? Do I have you to uh, blame for that? We wanted to <laughs> we wanted to kill off somebody. Uh, yeah, right. And that was uh, why did we kill off soap? I don't remember why we killed him off. It is a long time ago. I'm stretching your yeah, memory. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I, I don't even know. If I, there was a reason. I, I forget what it was. Um, yeah. But uh, you don't have to have the, the biggest of reasons. But, yeah, no, that got uh, – that was very controversial. And, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't it, – it was a tough development because here's a team that's kind of trying to uh, stick together down there, and there's a team that, that we're – we don't even – we're st- trying to – build ourselves because we were new um and we're hiring and there you know so it was it was a crazy time and it, it finally after about six months or so so we kind of gelled where we said this is what we'll do when you guys do that and it 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 we complemented each other really well at the end of the day we made a really good game together oh i i honestly believe i put in 40 days worth so oh. yeah and an unforeseen yeah. amount of time on that game and then yeah, so we- yeah. When that, how many people worked on that one from your memory? We must have been around 200. That's a, I don't think yeah. we could have hired much more than that. 200. And I think they were, uh, they were less than a hundred, I believe at the time. And so once, once launch is done, I guess you still got to do DLCs and that kind of thing. But when do you start thinking about the next game, Advanced Warfare? Uh, well, so here's <laughs> something. I'm in. Uh, I'm in Europe. I'm. In, have you heard the story where I'm, I'm having dinner and in, in, uh, after a 31 day tour? No. Press tour? Okay. So I'm, tell me. My last day. I'm in. I'm in in, uh, in the UK. I'm in, in London, and they're. Uh, I get a call, and it's it's from uh, home base, and they said, "Hey, we want you to go to uh, uh, Moscow, Russia." Yeah, to- yeah. Russia. I came back to the table or wherever, you know, and I said to the journalist that I was with, and I said, I, I am not making a game where the enemy is a country. My next one. And it took me a few months to figure that out, but, you know, what it was, but that was something that I, you know, I vowed not to have the country, and that's why we have a PMC. Yeah. But so I, I noticed those, there was three games there where they went from boots on the ground to – exosuit sort of stuff was yep. that by happen chance that all three in a row were that style or did they bet on that or did you pitch that idea what do you remember oh, no, no. so yeah i pitched uh so i went in with uh 
advanced warfare, right? Here, this is this is in my wheelhouse, science fiction, even though yeah. it was 50 years, this was, you know, uh, years of reading Arthur Clarke and, and those guys who, who, who actually use real life stuff. And that's so what that's what I used. I said anything for advanced warfare has to be. Uh, it still had a realism to it, even though it was futuristic. Yeah. Well, it, it had to either have a hypothesis, a, a thesis, or a prototype, or else it wasn't getting in. Um, uh, so uh, I remember with uh, it, it all sort of came together because I, I. I was just looking for a brand new mechanic and they said to me, you know, you, 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 you know, you need to come up with something crazy this time. We didn't know we were going to go future. We didn't know what we were going to do. We're talking at the time, uh, at, you know, another advanced war, I mean, a, uh, you know, a regular warfare. I, I'm not sure which one, but it wasn't advanced at the time. And, um, and I remember just one day going, uh, well, if I was in my own video game, I want to jump really high and shoot. Right. And, uh, and that's really what I wanted to do. I remember, I go in there, we go in there with a pitch. I think it's my best pitch. And I worked on it for a couple of months and all. I put everything together. I don't research everything. And I walk, I have walking tanks and all this. And they go, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> this, is, this is so far out in the future. I'm like, it's uh, not that far out in the future. Right. Yeah. But, there's there's a mistake that some some of us creatives we we make once in a while and it, it, it is um too much it's too much yeah, yeah. It, but it's okay. what they want right just not today right <laughs> yeah yeah so you know they were like walking tanks and 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 it's funny because I go I go to NASA maybe two weeks later and the guy goes to me to take me around. He's like, we got a real special treat for you, Glenn. We got a walking tank. <laughs> <laughs> and they lower this thing out of the sky, you know, out of the building. And it, it's it, from the building. And it's actually for uh, drilling. They're going to land it on uh, asteroids. Whoa. You yeah. must have thought, okay, the game's on there. That was a pr like a premonition kind of thing. Oh, well, you know, at, at the time, Connery looks to me and he goes, dude, what? Why is it you, you always write like this? And, uh, <laughs> I have no idea on this one. Let me tell you. But it seemed like logical that you have little drones. And that's why I was going at first. They said, yeah, hey. you have drones that are tanks. Why won't you make them bigger in 50 years? So the, the game that I pitched that day is the game that we shipped and more. Wow. Matter of fact, just because of that pitch, the opening scene in Advanced Warfare is the walking tank. That's the first thing you see, right? Because it's so cool. But that was uh, that was um, uh, uh, another labor of love. But that's one that you have to study the future and the past to get to that one. So that one was very cool. Um, so you have Modern Warfare, which was, uh, 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 you know, today um today's warfare and then you have uh advanced warfare was uh, the future and then the, in the have the past so all three were really great creative challenges for me and that's why I, when i was done with the third one i was done because what what's next you know the near future the, you know let, so I, I i felt like creatively was done you were never going to work on black ops because i know they they gave you a special thanks um i think that's uh I think because we helped them out a lot. We help each other along the way. The Call of Duty studios help each other. Yeah. Mark Lomney and I were good friends. And, you know, we were all, you know, it's like you're, you're, it's a big thing. It's a, it's like a family. You got to, you, you, you call one of these guys up every once in a while and say, hey, dude, I, I'm struggling here. Can you, you send me an expert or something, you know? When was Kevin Spacey? Where did he come on board? No, no, he was my, they, I went in there with the pitch for Kevin. He's my favorite actor at the time. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, so, uh, no, I, I, I said, uh, um, because I knew we, you know, we would, I knew Kevin wouldn't break the bank at the time. Um, I mean, it was, uh, you know, one, not, not one of the, this, this craziness. And he was my favorite actor, two-time uh, Academy Award winner, right? 
Yeah. Um, so, and I just thought he'd do a fantastic job at it, which he did. Um, and matter, matter of fact, when you, you said action, this guy gets, you know, turned it on. And how do you look back on those three CODs? You look back fondly. You, would you ever go back and do another COD if asked? That's that's <laughs> one of the very, very, very few licenses that I ever work on. Yes, yes. I, matter of fact, uh, I, I saw something not about six months ago in, uh, in, in real life that uh, gave me an idea for another COD game, something completely different. But, uh, you still got cod ideas. It's still in I, your veins. You can't, you know, you can't turn off <laughs> ideas, man. You know, like in the middle of the night, all of a sudden, idea. You're like, no, no, go away. It's, you, know, you know, you read something, and I don't know how it goes. How to, like, I don't know how. Like the the craziest one. One of them was the the religion for Dead Space. It's like, how do you make sometimes these weird connections that are just like. And it's an idea. I think sometimes it's because you, in your head, you're going in five directions at once. And you can kind of hear the one that's like, okay, that one makes sense. Uh, I, I, I'm, not sh- I'm not sure sometimes. But, uh, yeah. you know, there, there's some ideas you're like, I, I, don't, I don't know how, I, how, how that came from there to here, but I'll take it. So Callisto Protocol, you had to create another studio. What's that like? I mean, because you've already created Sledgehammer and then you walked away from that to work on um, Striking Distance. Which, yeah, yeah. Where do you start? Um, you know, I, I uh, at the time I had a few ideas and um, um, a friend of mine just, uh, you know, I think it was GDC was happening and, I was starting to kind of, you know, to to look around. I was I was looking at a few different places, and then a friend of mine calls me and says, uh, "You know, um, the PUBG guys want to talk to you." And uh, and so I'm like, "Oh, okay. I don't I don't even know uh, who they are, you know." Um, but I, uh, I I met Ch and 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 Ashley and some of the people that are no longer there right now. Uh, uh, Ch is still there. And I really, really enjoyed uh, talking with them. As a matter, as a matter of fact, we hit it off really quickly. And uh, a lot of the right things were said at the time. You know, four years later, not all the same things are always said, but uh, uh, by me as well, probably. So um, I really, I really liked, uh, I really liked working with them uh, in, for the first couple of years. It was really the last. Last year or so, that uh, all this thing, all of a sudden, I think you know, we went public and it put an awful strain on the company and the and the board of directors and everybody else, and then they put the strain on on us probably uh, because if you look back, man, we're the only game that came out and crafted them for four years. Yeah, right? we were we were the brand new studio. We were the brand new studio, and and they couldn't even publish us. We had to self publish, dude. I don't know if you saw that. We had to create our it own. It did? Yes, we did. And then we eventually, and we we put them in our, uh, in, in, in uh, Striking Distance Studios. That's where they were. And then um, near the end, they said, hey, we're going to take them and we're going to use them as the, as the Western publishing company. They did so good. And But doesn't PUBG make a boat ton of money every day? Or am yeah, I wrong? But, you know, that. It doesn't matter. No, they make up. They, I don't know how much they make uh, on it yeah. now, but um, they 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 make the money on it. But you know, they you can't sustain the business just on this one game. You got to make others, right? So uh, that's what they were looking for for some of these other games. I was looking for some of these other games to to help us as well because I figured, yeah, we're a big expensive game. We're kind of a new IP. What new IPs need around them is some steady. Guys, yes. you know, but the truth is, is that PUBG is so new that at the time they didn't have any new other um, yeah, evergreen type games, you know. Callisto kind of reminds me of Uncharted 1. Like you can see the potential of that series. And then, you know, obviously Uncharted got to go for two and three and look at the six, yeah. you know what I mean? But the, the fact they're not making it is ridiculous because they, Callisto, we had to cut two and a half bosses out of it. 
I mean, I had to cut like Did three, you? three or four enemies out of it. Wow. Um, because I don't know. I mean, not only, so think about this. That's insane. Notice though, during, the, during COVID, America lost 1.2 million people died, right? This wasn't like, oh, they're getting sick and they're, you know, no. Uh, my, one of my best friends, my, my college roommate died. I could never Sorry go to him. Sorry to hear, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? But we all lost people mm. on top of that. When someone got sick and inevitably you have a studio of 200, 250 people, 10 to 20 people a month were getting sick. And they were getting sick for weeks, right? We were devastated. There were sometimes our whole department of VFX would be out, our animation department, um, you know. And uh, and you know what? When I would call in Korea, they're not having that problem, right? You know, we don't follow rules as well. Maybe I don't know what it is, but we have a bigger country, you know. So doesn't matter. We lost a lot of people. We went through hell. And then on top of that, in 21, we had the great resignation. We had 49 people quit on top of that. Besides, because everybody's paying through the roof. And so people are leaving for $10,000. Uh, right. And their jobs are made and they're, they don't have to leave their house. All they got to do is turn in their uh, their equipment. In most cases, we're telling them you can keep the equipment. It's not, you know. So... 21 was my worst year of, uh, of development in my life because you have COVID going on. Um, I, ha I have the, uh, this, the, the, this uh, great resignation going on. I, I did not think we'd even get the game done. Um, and that we're just, we're cutting stuff to get it out, you know? Uh, yeah. And then added some stuff back in, in the end. Um, you yeah. had, had freed up some time. Um, not free of time, free of some people, but no, you, you're right. Dude. This, this should, this should be a sequel. So what would you have done differently looking back? If you could, if you could have it again, is there anything you would have done differently or is it just absolutely, a, absolutely. Yeah? one thing, put my foot down. I'm not shipping it. Yeah. If, if, if you want the game to ship, then you come take over the studio and ship it. I should have, I, I sometimes, you don't know who you are, you know, and, uh, you know, four or five years ago, I was like, well, who am I going to tell these guys? I'm not going to, I'm going to, I should have. Absolutely. Well, I still think you should be proud of it, man, because it, I really enjoyed it. And I know there's thousands and thousands of people that well, oh, really no, enjoyed no. it. I'm very proud of you because <clears throat> as we're making TLC, so I kid you not, they started ignoring me. The game came out December 2nd. So, as we're making, we're doing DLC. I'm to the team. Start patching. Let's. I'm going to go out to the. I'm going to go out to the uh, uh, community. I'm going to ask them for help. We know what we wanted to put in the game, and we're just going to patch it. And so, we just kept patching, and uh, you know, Crafton wasn't talking to us. They were just like, "Where is it?" You know, DLC. And I'm like, "Okay, well, I'm just going." We did 86 patches. And in three and a half months, that was that's what we needed. And uh, dude, on the PlayStation Network, man, it, it kicked ass. And and uh, the reviews were really good. I can't tell you the stories I get back now. It, it's going to be one of those games that, as the years go on, people look back and go, "Yeah, you know what I mean." And I, you know, you got the riot so. mode now, great mode that you got oh, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that mode. Oh, good, uh, man. Good, good, good. You got the DLC, uh, New Game Plus. Yeah. I killed off Josh in the end. He loved that, <laughs> by the way. And I'm not saying he's dead either. I mean, uh, I'm just saying he doesn't have arms and legs, but, you know. Uh, so was the idea for Danny to be the protagonist in the second, or you can't? You probably can't speak on that, can you? Uh I had one one scenario where it, you know she she came back to talk, but uh, uh, okay. I would I would have I I have it's more complicated and no I had I had uh, I wanted to bring back Josh and um, but I actually wanted to to act like he was dead and start off with a different character 
And then halfway through, this character dies. And then they're like, well, we know one guy. And then you surprisingly bring him back. Oh, that would have been sick. And it's really just triggered something in my mind, by the way, randomly. Two months ago, Modern Warfare 3, some sort of alternate ending was leaked where there was a, there's this other guy that comes out with Ma once Makarov's dead. Does that ring any sort of bells for you at all? No. No? With Makarov. Yeah, another mysterious figure walks out after he's hanging you know, there. maybe you're right. Yeah? It was found in the game files. I'm just wondering if you remember anything about it. There's one guy I could ask, and I will ask. It. But you know okay. what? The sound there. It does I sound think right. He was Russian too, I think. Uh, wow, I got you. Yeah, there's someone I'll ask. Oh, it yeah. Familiar. Yeah, this weird that this weird stuff like that happens. Let, let me know. Let me know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple more. A couple more. So Callisto. So what's the future now with you? You've obviously left the studio. Where do yeah, you see? I mean, yeah, uh, I would. I would have uh, loved to have made um, that one. Uh, I presented them with a full blown idea, everything, um, and uh, uh, I, I knew it wasn't going to happen because they, they were so insistent that they make the money on the first game. And that wasn't the discussion we had at the beginning of all this. It was the discussion we had was The Witcher. Look at The Witcher, right? That was a discussion. So this this all kind of, you call me by surprise in the end, near the end there. So I just, you know, at this point in my career, it's, uh, I, I wanted to leave the studio on a good, good note so we yeah. did all the uh the dlc we did the i have even left them with a game idea and of course they're not going to use it and it's freaking awesome idea <laughs> but you know that's that's <laughs> i shouldn't even say that you get by crap idea. But, uh, so they're still going they're still making a oh, game absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay and so, yeah yeah she's a legend i'm sure a lot of my friends are there a lot of good friends. And are, are your other two kids going to be in the business too? No, I'm afraid not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. And so for the future for you, where do you see yourself going in the next few years? Um, I don't know. Right now, i got to be honest with you. It's like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Day by day? Look, there's a couple projects. There's there's one or two in particular that I I could be an executive producer on, and and I, the reason why I say that because I would only take on a project in which I like. You love the game, I would make it myself, and there is one that I would, and um, and so that's what I'm thinking about right now. It's hard not to want to do your own game, but I, you know maybe this is a good good thing for me maybe i've directed my last game i don't know so but, going, uh, going to a more producing instead of directing it, uh, yeah like helping get in the game done or you want to or uh you want to come up with ideas or you know as i'm already doing right now just saying i gotta be honest i don't think this is strong enough this you know you gotta work on this we gotta work you know that sort of thing is where i can be uh, consulting pretty pretty yeah. helpful well, man, whatever's next, can you come back and talk about it when it when it eventually? Oh yeah, man, this was great, dude. Yeah. This was a pleasure, brother. Really was. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Thank I want to say, and and I want to say, thank you for everything you've done, man. I know people give you slack, and people love you as well. That you get a bit of everything, but I want to say I get, I thank you for everything, man. I get, I get I get a lot of good. I mean, yeah, people every once in a while like to, and you just gotta let that. Go. Don't don't even worry about that. There it is. Yeah. yeah. It's been it's been really nice. It's been uh, it's been more than I could have ever dreamed for this career. So, and I met I meet great people. I met yeah. great people. Congrats, man, on everything. And thank you. I'm really looking forward to what you do next. And uh, love your art, love what you do, and appreciate your time, man. Thank you, Dan. And man, uh, I appreciate the good questions and just kind of keeping it real. Thanks. Thanks.